Good afternoon, guys. Uh, the previous lecture, we laid out the basic foundation of uh, object-oriented analysis. In this lecture, we're going to be discussing about what we meant by abstraction. So as we, as we say abstraction, what typically comes to your mind? Um, you guys, you know, in your informal talks, talk about the abstract, you know, you need to be abstract, abstract thinking, what not, blah, blah, blah. But have you observed what does it mean by abstract or abstraction? So essentially what it is basically what the definition says that uh, or you may define it that it sort of uh, provides a crystal clear boundary, okay, uh, boundary around the uh, object or around the uh, thoughts, discussion or whatnot. Let's say you went to playground and uh, you say to your friends or opponent party in a playground, say there is a soccer match, okay this is the boundary and this is our area and that is your area so you have basically abstracted abstracted it that what it is your your field and what is opponent's field so you have drawn a boundary around it in the same way when we uh, think in terms of objects and classes we sort of think uh, what are the distinguished properties or what uh, what attributes are there which which sort of defines a boundary around that object and distinguishes that object from other objects let's say for example uh, this is a happy dog now, somebody may say that uh, this is a dog, this, it has two legs, um, you know, happy face, um, two ear. Well, somebody else says, no, it has two beautiful eyes too, you know. So what it is, you know, you have abstracted the, the eyes or the portion certain portion of, of this dog and you named it as eyes, okay, two eyes. In the same way, you have abstracted certain portion which you say the face, okay. Now, within that face, you may have other objects. Let's say the, the happy, you know, happy looking teeth of this, this dog object within the bigger object. And two eyes and two ear and uh, you know what not. So abstraction provides us uh, a way uh, to define hierarchies, or uh, it's it's very similar. Like uh, you might have observed that when you do packing in your home, you know you bring small boxes and you pack your stuff in a small box. And then put that small box in bigger box so that it's easy to carry right so basically you are you are knowingly or unknowingly applying the idea of abstraction the idea here is to focus on essential characteristics of an object so here the the smallest object here what we can say for example is the eye it has a characteristic that you know the dog can see. Now eye can have characteristic that it can be human eye, it can be dog's eye, it can be any other animal's eye. Okay, but that means that uh, eye is eye, but it has you know it it has a purpose to see. Okay, you can see you know by eyes. And it, it attributes may differ that, okay, that I has a kind or type of, it's a dog I. Okay. Let's take an example. Uh, before taking an example, let's try to say what different kinds of uh, abstraction we can have or we have. 
So typically what we, um, we find that uh, four kinds of abstraction, we can, you know, define an entity abstraction. For example, this dog, it becomes an entity and one level of abstraction, okay. Action abstraction, say for example, the dog barks or dog fights, okay, or dog runs. So action, what action are being taken by this entity? We can, you know, make one, one abstraction level for the action. Same way, virtual machine abstraction. Um, you have uh, different kinds of computing platform and you are representing information in a very abstract form which later on can be processed by a different machine okay but a virtual level more specifically coincidental abstraction what it means that basically you have grouped together certain things okay but those uh, they don't uh, have anything to do in common but you have just grouped it for example um, you have assorted chocolates and you have grouped them in a box they don't have common property as such except you can eat them right and you have grouped them together so this is a coincidental abstraction okay so let's take an example of a pen right so this is a regular pen for example what we can say about this abstraction level pen okay its characteristic what is its color the color can be outer color or color of the ink okay and what is the responsibilities of this pen object that is writing on a paper in ink okay simple now let's uh, try to make this simple pen a bit complex okay? let's talk about digital pen okay so we have made this regular pen a bit more complex added the digital functionality so along with the color and ink now it has a battery and it has a wi-fi capability so that when you write on paper it can uh, store that data or 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 and it can uh, simultaneously transfer that data to your computer via Wi-Fi. So what, what's this responsibility? Writing as regular, also real-time transfer and charging of the battery. Okay. So say see we have added here uh, more functionality and we have made a different layer of abstraction. So, so what we can say that okay now we had earlier pen okay but now when we added the digital then the pen shares common attribute between regular pen and a digital pen so what we can say okay you can also say at a different hierarchical level that this is a regular pen And this is the digital one. So say uh, how uh, how we uh, arranged in a different hierarchy, the same pen at one abstraction level and next abstraction level, regular pen and a digital pen. Okay. And we can do, you know, we can go on further specific attributes of uh, re uh, regular and digital pen specific to the digital and regular hierarchy. But the common attribute of uh, both regular and digital pen is to write, okay, and color of the ink and the outer color of the pen. Good. So, see how it helped us to arrange our data. Now, if we want to implement this whole thing in a programming language co um, context, then if you are not taking any object-oriented programming language or a very simple thing, what we, you can do, you can take a struct. Say in C, C programming language, you have a struct feature. 
where you can you can group the common properties in a structure okay and you can define the structure but if you are say you want to you know do some more sophisticated uh, development you can use c++ object oriented programming language and there you have the concept of class as an object and uh, you know um, there you can define accordingly so important idea for for this discussion is about about to understand what abstraction means now going back to this dog example now the dog at one level at one abstraction level you can say it's a dog but if you go a little um, another higher level of abstraction you can say animal dog shares the property of animal okay there can be other kinds of animal too So that's the that's uh, one of the uh, major uh, element of uh, object-oriented analysis. The idea is to to think in terms of very clear understanding um, of uh, objects or draw the boundary around the objects, so that you you can uh, classify them uh, in classes. Okay. And you can reduce your classes and then you know later on when you do complex uh, software uh, development it's uh, it makes your life easier so take away from this uh, discussion is that the abstraction provides crystal and crisp boundary and denotes all essential characteristics of an object that that distinguish it from other objects okay and to focus on essential characteristics of an object and of course it depends on who is the analyst i mean different people may have a different view for the same problem so accordingly their analysis will differ however uh, with, the, with the more practice you would be able to uh, analyze uh, the system as an expert does so read more uh, article or if you are interested in continuing further make your career in this field um, take the book of um, uh, Grady Booch uh, object oriented analysis and design um, and read it. The ideas of my lectures are to give you basic understanding even though if you are not uh, studying books you should be able to uh, you should be able to analyze it and good to go right. Thank you guys uh, I hope uh, you guys are liking the lectures on, on the professor channel on YouTube. Thank you for subscribing and those who haven't subscribed, uh, please uh, do subscribe.